and I took the hutch apart. We removed all of the doors and the hardware. We also took the back out because we will be replacing the mirrors with beadboard. Now it is time to sand this beauty down. I can't stress how important sanding a piece of furniture down is. Although prep work is definitely not fun, how well a piece is sanded down will determine how well your paint sticks and how long the paint job will last. To do that, we are using a random orbital sander with 100 grit sandpaper for the top and other long, smooth areas. For the details and indents, we will hand sand them, also with 100 grit sandpaper. I will be painting this hutch with milk paint and I don't want the paint to chip, so we are sanding off the top coat. The great part about milk paint is it will soak down into the wood if the wood is not sealed, creating a very durable finish. Once everything is sanded down, I like to use my shop vac to remove all of the dust. I also wipe everything down with a rag, so if you don't have a vacuum, a rag will work too. Let's mix up that milk paint. True milk paint comes in the powder form, so we need to add water to it. To mix up milk paint, I use equal parts of water and milk paint. I like to start with warm water and then add my milk paint powder to it. For my first coat of paint, I also add extra bond. This will help the paint stick to the furniture. Now we will mix the milk paint up for about two minutes with the wire whisk. I have found the wire whisk really helps to get any clumps out of the milk paint. After about two minutes of mixing the milk paint, it will become thicker and all of the clumps should be mixed in. It is time to paint. With milk paint, it is important to use long, even strokes. When you are painting with extra bond in your paint, you want to make sure it is at least 60 degrees Fahrenheit so the bond will work correctly. You also want to let your first coat dry overnight. Oftentimes, when you paint wood, you will notice a yellowish color coming through your paint. 
This is called bleed through and it is not very attractive. It can be annoying but luckily it is easily fixed. With milk paint I like to use a clear shellac. The nice part about shellac and milk paint is that shellac will actually work much like the extra bond making the milk paint stick even better after the shellac dries. Now that the shellac is dry, I will apply two more coats of only milk paint without the extra bond. It is also very important that as you are painting, you use long, even strokes. One thing to be aware of when painting with milk paint is to apply the fewest coats possible unless you want it to flake. The more coats you apply, the more likely the milk paint is going to chip and flake as it dries. Once everything is painted and dry, it is time to sand. I like to use 220 grit sandpaper to smooth everything out and slightly distress certain areas.